Today I'm gonna to show you how to replace that Fuse 27 in your F-150 that's a problem with this generation. Since we are dealing with wires and fuses, we need to disconnect the battery. So grab your eight millimeter socket and start with the negative battery terminal. You don't need to unscrew the eight millimeter bolt all the way, just enough to loosen the terminal so you can pull it right off. Once it is off, push it out of the way. Make sure the cable is secure so it cannot free itself and risk touching the negative or positive posts on the battery while you are working. Now move on to the positive terminal. I'm going to disconnect both the positive and negative just to make sure there's zero power coming from the battery. There's a wire going from the positive cable to the fuse box, so just to be cautious, make sure you remove the positive cable also. This one is a little bit more difficult to push out of the way. So in order to prevent the terminal from touching the post, I'm going to move this rubber cover in between the terminal and the post. This should prevent the terminal from contacting the positive post on the battery. Now let's remove this cover over your radiator. You need to do this to have room to move the wire harness that runs in front of the fuse box. This cover is secured with four push clips and can be removed with a flathead screwdriver and or pliers. If you have trouble with some of the clips, you can also just pull up on the cover around the clip and it should break free. Some of these clips like to fight, so just be prepared to use some force. Once the cover has been removed, you now have access to that wire harness. This is secured with a white clip that is supposed to be attached to the harness. However, as you can see here, mine wasn't attached very well. This is not a big deal. I don't plan on reattaching it as the harness is pretty tight anyways. So I'm not worried about it moving around without that clip. Now let's open the fuse box and find the correct fuse you are going to replace. This yellow 20 amp fuse is the one that causes issues. Some people have seen their fuse melt after 100,000 miles, while others like myself don't see anything wrong with the fuse. That just means it's perfect time to install this relocation kit. It's always better to be proactive instead of reactive. The last thing I want is my truck to fail to start while I'm at work, which is 45 minutes away from home. That can be an expensive tow. Now here's that wire harness that goes from the positive terminal to the fuse box. Let's get that out of the way to give ourselves some more room to open the fuse box. So grab your 10 millimeter socket and remove that bolt. And now you can remove the two wires that are secured with ring terminals. To prevent from losing that 10 millimeter bolt, just put it back on the screw. We always lose 10 millimeter sockets. Let's try to hang on to our 10 millimeter bolts. And now we move on to the fun part. There are clips all around this fuse box that need to be detached so that we can access the wires underneath. First, you wanna get the fuse box off of the middle bracket that keeps the box secured. There are two in the front, and two in the rear. These are pretty easy to detach. Just put your flathead screwdriver between the metal clip and this plastic clip right here, and then gently turn the flathead to pry them apart. As they are separated, make sure you lift up gently on the side of the fuse box to unseat the clip from the metal bracket. Now move on to the next one, but make sure the fuse box doesn't fall back into that side of the bracket or you will have to do it all over again. Do the same thing to the two clips on the back and you should be able to move the fuse box up and off of the metal bracket. To prevent the box from attaching itself again, I'm going to pull it slightly forward and then down a little bit so the bracket is on the outside of the plastic clips. Now we can tackle the remaining eight clips to secure the bottom of the fuse box to the middle. There are four in the front, one on each side, and two in the back. This is going to be challenging, but take your time. Do not risk ruining the wires underneath.
These can be unclipped the exact same way as before. Grab your flathead, put it between the clip, and then twist or pry it open like I'm doing right here. As you are doing that, you need to pull up on the top of the fuse box to try to keep it separated as you move on to the next clip. Just keep working your way around. Again, this will take some time. Just don't rush. Go back and forth between the front, rear, and sides. Eventually, you should see your box do this. Now there are all of your wires. It's a bit overwhelming when you first look at it, but I'll point you in the right direction. To give yourself some more room, there is some electrical tape along the harness on both sides that run underneath of the fuse box. I'm going to cut them to loosen everything up. You can add electrical tape back to it later if you want to. As you can see on the screen, there's a lot more room now. So let's locate that Fuse 27 wire. The wire is blue with a red stripe. Now be careful. There are three wires around the same area that look pretty much the same, but are kind of different sizes. The larger one in the back right here is the one we need to cut. You can see it wires into that white section of the fuse box. That section is the third row or middle row. I'm going to cut that wire as close as I can to the top so I have enough to work with when I start soldering it to the new wire. There is an additional heat shrink that comes with the kit to cover this part of the wire after you cut it. But without the fuse in there, that wire is kind of dead. So instead, I'm just going to push that wire up and forget about it. Not to mention, I can't get to an outside electrical socket at the moment to use a heat gun. And more importantly, I don't want to use a heat gun in such a tight space for one little heat shrink. So I'm going to leave it. You do what you want to do. Now here's the part number for the kit I bought. Let's open this up and I'll show you what comes with it. Here's the heat shrink I will not be using. Here's the one I will use, as well as a larger 20 amp fuse and the new wire that we need to solder to the old one. Oh, and it comes with instructions, but I didn't really use them. There are also two stickers that come in the kit. One needs to go into the fuse box and the other into your owner's manual. This will remind you or let the next owner know the fuel pump relay has been relocated. So grab your owner's manual and find the fuses section. More specifically, you want the fuse specification chart. This is on page 299 of my owner's manual. Now, as you go through the pages, you will see all the fuses and relays listed in in order. Here is our fuse we are replacing, number 27. As you can see, it says fuse pump relay power, just like our new stickers say. Now if you jump to number 70, you notice it says not used. This is going to change with the kit, so we need to make sure we make notes of that. This kit makes it easy with these stickers. Just grab your sticker and place it at the bottom like this. Oh crap. Oh. This is not easy with one hand. Let's try that again. Place the sticker at the bottom and you are now finished with the owner's manual. Let's get back to that wire. You need to strip an inch to two inches off the end of the blue and red wire. I could not find my wire strippers, so I had to get a little creative. First, I tried to use the letter method, but I was worried I was going to ruin something, so I didn't leave the fire on there long enough to make a difference. So I quickly gave up on that. Now I moved on to another method that I highly advise against. I took some wire snippers and carefully tried to drag the blade on the outsides of the wire without cutting the core. This is not the way you should do this at all. Get yourself some wire cutters like the ones I have in the description below. When it comes to wiring, you do not want to risk messing things up. Let me do that for you instead. And also, be careful when pulling on the wire. I feel like this is becoming a video of what not to do.
Luckily, I was able to remove the outside wire and not mess up the core. Now make sure you get a soldering kit that has everything you need. You want solder in the gun, obviously, and also make sure you get some flux. Flux isn't necessary, but you'll see in the video why it's pretty important. I didn't use it, but I should have. Again, this is turning into a video of what not to do. So get out your soldering gun. I have this one from Ryobi, which is convenient because I have a lot of Ryobi tools and can use the batteries to power it. It also has a port to connect to a household outlet too. So I'm gonna put the battery in and then turn it on by pushing this button right here. This also turns to adjust the temperature. I started out on low heat, but then adjusted it higher later. Now grab your new wire and take off the end. I said take off the end. Come on, man. Okay, there you go. As you can see, there's about two inches of the core exposed. Now you wanna get these two wires to really mesh together. If you just twist them around like this, they will come apart rather easily. That won't work for me. I want them to really intertwine with each other. So spread some of the core out on both the old and new wires. Then thread them through each other. Now you can twist them together and this should give you a really good connection. It may seem like this is unnecessary also, but this mat is extremely useful. The last thing you want is to have scorching hot solder drop on other electrical components. Then you will need to do some extra wiring. I'm going to avoid that. This mat is made of silicone and the solder will not burn through it. At this point, you should add flux. I'll explain why later. I like to touch the solder on the tip of the gun first to test the heat and also coat the very tip of the gun. Now, if your soldering gun is hot enough, you should place the gun under the wire core and the solder on the top. The solder should melt easily. Mine isn't doing that. One because I'm not using flux, and two, because my gun isn't hot enough. So instead, I started touching the solder to the tip of the gun and melted it that way. This created a very rough surface, but have no fear. I solved that issue too. More on that in a bit. Make sure you cover as much of the wire cores as possible. You wanna make this connection perfect. and check that out. A little piece of solder fell onto the mat. Crisis averted. I'm now going to push the wire to the side so I can add some solder to the back. Oh, and don't you just love YouTube videos where the person's hand is blocking an important shot? Move, you idiot. There we go. Once you feel like you have added enough solder, take your gun and rub it over the solder you laid down. Make sure you keep moving the gun back and forth to prevent burning the solder completely off in different areas. This will smooth out those areas that are rough because you forgot or neglected to use flux. Lesson learned. That's how it should look. Now we can move on and get this project wrapped up. Wrapped up, get it, heat shrink, oh never mind. Before you put heat shrink on, you should always put some silicone paste on the connection. This prevents corrosion, which is extremely important. So just dab some on the wires and then you can move on to the heat shrink.
Normally you want to put the heat shrink on before soldering, but since this has an open end, I can easily slide it on. Um, your hand is in the way again. There we go. You want to fold over the connection and then slide the heat shrink down. Make sure this completely covers the cores you soldered together. Remember, I do not have access to a heat gun right now, so again, I needed to improvise a bit. First, I tried a lighter. This did work for the end closest to me, however, I was worried about using an open flame so close to the fuse box. So I tried something else. I took my solder gun, turned the heat back up, and then steadily moved the tip along the heat shrink. This worked, but remember you do not want to keep the gun in one position. You need to keep it moving to prevent damaging anything. It will take some time to finish, but in the end it will completely seal and you can move on. Now we need to locate the fuse 70 slot to push our new wire into place. This is the slot for fuse 70. Now just follow it down and under the top, and remember there are fuses on both sides. So this should be pretty easy to see underneath. And there it is. The only slot in the area between two other wires. That's where the new wire plugs into. Also, take note of the orientation of the wires. You want to put the new wire in the same way. I'll show you what I mean. See how this wire has some of the core showing here? That side you want facing up as you slide it into place. The other side is flat and you want that facing down. just like this. Now slide it into place. Once my hand leaves the view again, I'll show you how it looks. It should look flush like that, and if you give it a few tugs and it doesn't move, then you know you were locked in. Now just check the slot the fuse goes into to make sure it looks like it should. Yep, that looks great. Now let's get these wires tucked back in and reconnect our fuse box. Be gentle. Again, you are just about finished and the last thing you want to do is mess up another wire. And then you would have to rewind this guide and watch how to improperly solder. Again. Once you get the bottom and middle of the fuse box connected, you can push it back down onto the metal bracket that keeps it secured. Now go back around and recheck all plastic tabs to make sure they are seated properly. Once that's done, you can insert your new fuse into the 70 location. Then, grab your other sticker and place it right here on this ledge, underneath the fuse 70 location on the diagram. Just like that. Now all that's left is to go start your truck and make sure you did everything properly. You need to reconnect the battery first. Let's start with these two wires. Remove the 10 millimeter bolt and place these two wires back into place. Then tighten the bolt back down hand tight. Now close the fuse box lid. Let's get that plastic cover back on top of the radiator. There's still one clip left in the slot from earlier, so I'm going to remove that first. Now with all the clips in the cover, I'm going to line up the clips with the holes starting with the top two. Once those are in, push the two outside clips in. Now 
Now you can reconnect the battery. Start with the positive terminal first and hand tighten the 8mm bolt. Then do the same for the negative terminal. Now you can take your key and try to start your truck. Make sure there are no lights on the dash and you should be good to go. That's all there is to it. If you found any part of this video helpful or entertaining, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button as well as the notification bell so you don't miss a video from our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.